So here I have a nice Kodak Retina Reflex camera. The original Retina Reflex, not the Retina Reflex S. This one, well it's here for a service, but it's got a specific problem. It looks tidy enough. The prism even looks pretty good. Cock the shutter. Shutter works. Film advance won't move. Check the frame counter. Are we at number one? No. What's going on? Press the film release button. You can swing the film advance lever. Shutter fires. So what's going on? You can release the shutter, press it as hard as you like, it will not release the film advance for the next shot. Press the button down, we're away. So, something really odd going on here with the shutter release is not activating the film release mechanism. The film release lever its job is to free up the film advance to allow you to wind on for the next shot. Any clues? Well, yes. Look at this. See this lever? Look at that wobble. What that means is that the cam on the base of the film advance shaft is loose on the shaft. And the effect of that is that when you press down on the shutter release, the film release shaft is pressed down and the lever on the end of it is pressed down but it doesn't press down far enough to click down to the next level to the other level on that cam because the cam is loose on the shaft so it's certainly a wee problem there it's possibly not the only problem but it's one of the problems we'll see if I can hold that lever upwards while I depress the shutter, see if that'll make a difference. No, it didn't. So there's another problem there. We know that this is loose. It's also possible that the lever on the end of the film release shaft is bent and so it doesn't move down far enough. And how would you get in that situation? Well one way you can do that is if the film advance is stuck out from the body at some angle like that effectively stopping the release from being able to be depressed and you give it an extra good thump on the top that can end up bending things so I won't know more until I get this camera disassembled it's unusual to have one of these here that um, works so reliably except for that one real nuisance that every shot you have to press the film release button in order to be able to wind on for the next shot so where we left off decided that there was certainly a problem with the cam on the base of that film advance lever being wobbly but that was not the whole reason that this thing fails to release correctly Both the film release button here and the shutter release button here act on the same shaft, the film release shaft that runs through the camera. The uh, shutter release button is limited in its travel. It's just physically blocked, it can't go down beyond a certain point. The film release button up here potentially has longer travel. So quite possible the film release button, if it's pressed down far enough, would release the film release and allow you to wind on, whereas the shutter release never would. Both of them indicate a fault, of course. Um, we already know there's a fault down here, which will certainly contribute. But the other possible fault is that the adjustment is incorrect. There's a screw on the top of the film release shaft, and that may not be sitting high enough. It may it's um, a split shaft the screw has a certain amount of friction so that you can adjust it but if it's stretched for one reason or another that split shaft it'll have no friction at all and the screw may well have just worked its way in over time as the shutter release button has been pressed 
So it's time to have a look inside I think and see what exactly is going on. So I need to remove the top of the camera and start with the rewind knob. So putting something through the fork of the rewind I can spin that rewind knob off. We've got two pinhead screws here. Now this one is strange. You'll see it's sitting up at a, a funny height. I can get my fingernail under that. That shouldn't be the case. That means that something is not lined up correctly. And it may well mean that it's not centred correctly on the post. That probably means the top cover's had a thump. If we look at the end here, you can see that that strap lug is pushed right in. It suggests that the top cover has been pushed this way. So that screws out. Our meter here, the dial on the top of this needs to come off. And I'm just checking to see where that's sitting. And that's sitting about where I'd expect it to be. That suggests that the meter probably has functioned well enough in the past. So we can remove that knob. There are two screws on the top cover at the rewind end, so I'll unscrew those. These are chrome plated brass, fairly easily damaged. Take care that your screwdriver doesn't slip out of the slot, but use a good screwdriver so that it doesn't mutilate those slots. There's a bit of bounce on this top cover, that suggests that things are bent. A single screw at this end of the top cover. This strap lug is also bent, it's twisted. That screws tight. Now holding my finger on the top of the meter so it doesn't lift off, I'll lift the top cover off. The exposure meter should just be sitting there. I can lift that off. Now, what's going on here? There's something on the top of the screw. It looks like a little thread of uh, plastic to me was stuck there with grease. I've got no idea what that's from immediately. It's probably from the meter window. No, doesn't appear to be. That's a mystery. Well, let's have a look at this action. So I'll hold down the film release, uh, the frame counter button there. Wind this on. We rotate the shutter release round to there. That released the film advance. So what was going on there? I think what was going on there was that this film release shaft here was rotated out of position. That it wasn't sitting on top of that screw head at all. That shouldn't really be possible. I'm looking for marks on the inside of the case here at the top to see if there's any suggestion that that lever's been out of position. I'm not really seeing any. Let's pop this back together, see what happens. Now I certainly heard that shutter release release the film advance. You can hear the first click, that click. That's the second click. That's where it's really released the film advance. And 
a little bit more pressure and the shutter released. So there's no serious problem there, apart from the mystery of why, how this shaft came to be out of position. I wonder if it was tucked around under there somewhere. That shouldn't even be possible. Let's see if that's the case. That um, brings into question that meter a bit. Because some of these meters have an extending panel from here which stops things like this rotating. And this one doesn't. So if that was sitting straight ahead, is that even possible? That's it. It's because this shaft here, the shutter release shaft, was not sitting correctly in position. It should of course been sitting over that screw head. It was sitting round here. Now, that's a mystery. Does it mean that it has been somebody removed the top cover and put it back in the wrong position? Well, that's always a possibility, but as far as I know of the history of this camera, that's nothing of that nature's likely to have happened. We do know that the top covers had a severe thump, and it was out of position, um, so because that screw wasn't seated correctly. The fact that, that screw wasn't seated correctly suggests to me I don't see how that screw could move out of position and jump up. It suggests to me that this was out of position and then the screw was put back rather than the screw was all sitting correctly in position and then it got shifted. So I think someone has had the top cover off this. And I think that that explains what's gone on with this shutter release shaft. I don't see anything odd about that. It should have sat like that, so that this lever and this lever were both seated over that screw, and instead it was set like that, underneath the film release lever, and not touching this at all. Well, that's a bit of an odd one. I'll get this all correctly positioned and I'll check how the camera functions. I'm not even sure how you could do that easily. I suppose if you depress the shutter release and can you rotate that? You can do, you can force it round. But there's no way to easily achieve that from outside of the camera because there's no way of rotating that. Put our shutter release button back on there. Always hold my finger on the top of the meter to keep it located while I'm putting the case in place. Let's put the screws back in. Put a screw on the top of the case there. Run that down. That tightens up normally and is, and is centered correctly. You can see that these holes are out of line because the whole bracket's been pushed in. 
We can leave those off, that's going to hold that firmly enough at that end of the case. And a single screw at this end of the housing. Again, that bracket is a little bit thumped out of shape, so that screw is not lining up very well. That's done up. Advance. Fire. Advance. Fire. So, there we have it. There were two faults with that shutter release. Um, one of them is a little bit awkward to explain, other than someone having had the top off and um, just having mispositioned that when they put the top back in place and the only alternative possibility is that somehow when the camera housing got pushed across that did something, changed something here, shifted things across far enough so that could move but I think that's unlikely. I think given that the screw here was not screwed down correctly in position because the top cover was displaced shows that that screw had been out after the top cover had become displaced. No one obviously dealt with the displacement issue. They just simply put that screw on, screwed it down. It didn't want to go down into the hole in the top cover neatly because, of course, it was out of line. And at that stage, that fault was introduced. Were there other faults prior to that? Well, very probably. People don't usually delve into the tops of cameras without some plan in mind. Usually it's not just curiosity. Generally speaking, there's some problem that they have a sneaking suspicion they're going to be able to remedy by having a look under the top cover, or at least enlighten themselves as to what the cause might be. So, that was an interesting little problem. Now, by and large, that problem's gone. This camera's in working in a good working state, well enough for warm weather photography. The shutter is a little bit gummy, that of course is not uncommon. Um, with oil on the blades and things of that nature, you'll find that the mechanism may well behave well in warm weather, but at the first sign of cold weather, the oil, the viscosity rises, it gets thick and sticky, and stuff won't move. This would be, you could probably put a film through this on a sunny day, I don't think you'd have a great deal of trouble with it. But long term, it certainly needs to be serviced. And of course, I've got to deal with this problem of the film advance lever anyway, at the bottom. To deal with this wiggle. And that wiggle will certainly have a bearing on the action of that release. Because you can hear, I've depressed that very slowly. A little tiny click. That's the first step of the film release acting. A second click, that's, that is the film release act, completely released. Now if I was to move the film advance lever I could wind on, even though I hadn't actually taken a shot. So the first release, second click, and then quite a bit more depressing of the shutter release before the shutter actually fires. So the timing there is incorrect. Um, it's certainly releasing the film release before it gets to the point where the shutter fires. Those actions in theory should be relatively simultaneous. Um, for convenience you want the film release to actually release slightly before the shutter fires in the, in the action of this mechanism. A person who was doing exactly as they were supposed to be doing with cameras and squeezing the release very gently until the shutter fired, they would be able to release the shutter but not release the film release and then, then of course they'd not be able to wind on without going through the tiresome business that this camera was showing before where you needed to press the film release button as well. So. For practical purposes, you want the film release to action to happen first and the shutter to fire second. But you want those 
actions to happen as close as possible in the travel of the shutter release button as you can reasonably make it. And that way you'll have least problems. There we have it. This camera now needs to be completely stripped down and serviced. I'll start by separating the parts I want to go through the ultrasonic cleaner which will be the screws. I'm just taking apart the rewind knob at the moment. That washer can go through. Parts like this have got paint on them, they can't go through the ultrasonic cleaner because the paint would end up getting stripped. Now of the meter dial stuff here, the screw can go through. The two wavy washers can go through. These parts of course can't. Let's get these pieces sorted correctly. I'm busy telling you one thing and doing another here. So these pieces all got paint on them, they can't go through the cleaner. These pieces, none of them have paint on them and they can. This top cover, one screw here at the end. These brackets are both going to have to be squared up so that they work correctly. The screwdriver that I'm using to get these pinhead screws out was just a standard blade screwdriver of a suitable width and I've just used a Dremel to grind away all the bits that didn't look like the screwdriver I needed. So it's just left with two points that work on those particular screws. And the pin spacing there is different than the pin spacing on the rewind knob screws. So I'll lift that meter off, put that to one side, lift off the release lever, put it into the, the cleaning, the shutter release shaft can go for cleaning. And the top here, the strap plug here, is going to need to be cleaned. It's also going to be need to be straightened up because it's been thumped and bumped. The strap lug at this end, that can come off. That's going to need a little bit of straightening out too. Those pieces can go through the cleaner. Now these, the strap lug at the right hand end of the camera. This piece here also holds down the cocking rack. If this is quite distorted, you'll find that it might be stiff, that the cocking rack might not want to move smoothly at that point. I'm going to remove the prism. I might just move that advance slightly first. What I'm doing here is pulling the film advance forward so that this lever is not sitting over my prism. Two screws here hold the prism either side. Now this prism is in quite good order which is quite unusual for a early retina reflex like this. Very commonly they have lost some silvering. It may mean that this is a later replacement or it may be original certainly looks very tidy. I'll put that very carefully to one side. All right. The shutter cocking rack here is only held down with two screws at the moment. When the bracket's missing from this end and it hasn't got that uh, round bush in place, that guide bush, be very cautious about moving the film advance lever because you may end up stripping teeth. There's a shim washer that was sitting underneath that, that bracket. And that would that's fairly unusual. And there's the shutter cocking rack. Now that differs from the shutter cocking racks on a Retina 3C type camera. This section here is very shallow instead of coming down deep like this. 
and the action here, this lever here for setting the frame counter would normally just be a little upstand on the end there for a 3C type. At the top of the camera there's a single screw here, that's a guide screw that the meter would have sat against. And looking at that, that tells me that this is a replacement meter because the original one would have had a plastic shroud that came along here and sat over that screw. That's what's allowed that shutter release to um, swing around out of position. It's the meter. It's not the original meter, it's a replacement and it's not suitable. Let's take that top chrome trim off, take that screw out, rewind here can come out. Now that screw is loose and it's made. It's a bit sticky. Um, it looks like it's stuck down with grease. Look at the state of that, that that's grease that's sweated out of this rewind yeah it looks the same colour and it's run everywhere now it's a bit unusual that you wouldn't normally expect to see that at the top we can take the screw here out of the film release lever shaft And here I'm just taking the clip off the top of that uh, end of film lock, lock lever, and I'll put it spring aside too. Single screw here at the centre of the film advance shaft. So I don't know enough about the history of this camera to uh, be able to say when that exposure meter had been replaced. I certainly think it has been replaced. I don't think that's the original. Will this come off? Yes it will. Looking at the state of this, the camera is mechanically, we know it, it sort of works. That's a great place to start from, a camera that sort of works. I can see that it certainly needs to be serviced because all the oil, all the grease there is very dirty. It's collected a lot of dust and it's all sticky with age. So. It's a camera that needs to be serviced, but there's every likelihood that with the benefit of a service, it'll work nicely without any complications. See if we can get under this leatherette patch. Yeah, that lever's got three loose screws on it by the looks of it. Now that's interesting because I took this loose lever as being a sign of a, a loose shaft end on that shut, uh, film advance shaft. Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps it was just loose screws. Let's tighten those screws up and see if there's any wobble. No, there's no perceptible wobble. So there we go. We don't have a problem with that. And all that had happened was that these three screws had backed out. If those three screws have backed out, there are probably doubtless other loose screws in and around the camera. Just trying to get these screws loose from the lever. I'll have a look at that leatherette patch. You can see the marks from the screw heads on it, but that's not particularly unusual. 
there's nothing really there to suggest to me that that patch has been removed and been replaced at any stage which would point to perhaps the camera never having been serviced in the past these screws are loose careful not to lose that little spring I'll just uh, pause briefly and restart because otherwise I'll run over the end of my video size file size limit.